So in this video, we're going to learn about what a titration is. It is a process that we use to determine the concentration of an unknown substance. And the titration is a method that we use that involves neutralization reactions. So if you remember from when we learned about acids and bases, a neutralization reaction is a reaction between an acid and a base that produces water and an ionic salt. So this reaction between an aqueous solution of a strong acid and any aqueous solution of a strong base forms a neutral salt and water. So if the molar amounts are balanced, and what I mean by that is that there are equal numbers of aqueous hydrogen ions and aqueous hydroxide ions, right? So the hydrogen ions coming from my acid and the hydroxide ions coming from the base, that is that all the acid and all the base will be neutralized, right? And when all of the acid and all of the base are neutralized, you end up with a result of a pH of seven, right? So a neutralization reaction occurs between an acid and a base. And in our course, we're only gonna take a look at strong acids and strong bases reacting together. So if you have equal amounts of acid and equal amounts of base, you will end up with a completely neutral reaction, right? So if our hydroxide ions and our hyd um, hydrogen ions are equal, there are equal numbers of those, you'll end up with a neutral solution, a solution that has a pH of seven. So there are a few key terms, right? So we talked about, or we mentioned the word titration. So the titration is a procedure that we use to determine the concentration of a solution by reacting a known volume of that solution with a measured volume of a solution that has a known concentration. So you've got an acid and a base. One of them is going to have a known concentration and known volume. And you're going to add the other into that known concentration and known volume to figure out how much it'll take to neutralize it. Right? So in a titration, the concentration of one solution is determined by quantitatively observing its reaction with a solution of a known concentration called a titrant. So of the two, the one that you know the concentration of, that is called the titrant. During a titration, an acid-base indicator is often added to the solution to help indicate the pH, right? So as you're adding your unknown concentrate, that, that solution that contains the unknown concentration, as you're adding it, you wanna see when the pH is changing. And in order for you to visually see that, you're using an acid-base indicator. So when you're trying to neutralize a solution, an indicator such as phenolphthalein, so that's a specific indicator that we're going to use in um, the titrations that we see, is chosen because it will change color very close to the equivalence point, right? So the equivalence point is when the moles of the acid are equal to the moles of the base. So when you get to that equivalence point, you will see and in the indicator change the color of that solution, which means that you know that that equivalence point is close. The point in a titration when the indicator changes color is called the end point. So in order to perform this procedure, you have a few materials that you need. And these materials are used specifically for titrations. So these are a burette, the titrant, an Erlenmeyer flask, a solution of unknown concentration and some indicator. So the setup is like this, right? So you've got a stand here, and I'm sure that you've seen these in a lab setting. And at the top, you have the burette. So this long tube-like substance that you see is your burette. And you'll notice that this little knob here allows you to control how much of this solution goes into the Erlenmeyer flask, right? So you can open it such that there's a lot of it going, or you can close it such that only one or half or even a quarter of a drop is falling into the Erlenmeyer flask, right? So in the burette, you have the titrant. And the titrant is the solution of known concentration. So we know the concentration of the titrant and that always goes in the burette, right? And this blue liquid that you see here is the titrant, which is of the two solutions, the one that you know the concentration of. 
And as I mentioned, the tap of the burette allows a person to precisely control the amount of titrant being added to the solution in the Erlenmeyer flask. Now the Erlenmeyer flask, that's used for all kinds of other experiments, so this Erlenmeyer flask in a titration holds the solution of unknown concentration, but you know the volume of it, right? So if I determine that I'm gonna, only gonna have 25 milliliters of this unknown solution, and that's what's going in the Erlenmeyer flask. So you don't know the concentration, but you do know the volume. So the solution of unknown concentration with an indicator is placed in the Erlenmeyer flask, right? So you have this setup where you have the unknown concentration solution in the Erlenmeyer flask and the solution with the known concentration in the burette. And as you add in, you're going to slowly add in, you're going to see when it changes color. So another important thing that I forgot to mention is that in the burette, these lines allow for you to measure how much of the titrant there is, right? So for example, if this is the 40 milliliter point, right? So if you're measuring 40 milliliters, obviously after you let some of that titrant into the Erlenmeyer flask, that's going to change, right? So obviously after you add in 10 milliliters, you're gonna end up with 30 milliliters left over. Right? And because that change has occurred, you know that you've added 10 milliliters into the Erlenmeyer flask. Right? So you're very, very carefully, you're controlling how much of this titr uh, titrant you're adding into the Erlenmeyer flask. Now there's this video on D2L. Um, I want you to watch it and they, very, they go through the steps of a titration very carefully. It is very, very valuable that you watch it so that you can understand what is happening. Oops. I'm not going to play it, but it is on D2L for you to watch. Now let's take a look at a calculation for a titration problem. And this is actually nothing new, especially a question like this, because we've seen these already, right? We've seen these when we did stoichiometry, this is exactly what we did. So, so I've got sulfuric acid reacting with sodium hydroxide, right? So H2SO4 plus NaOH gives you now, this is a neutralization reaction, so I know this produces Na2SO4 plus H2O. This is liquid, this is aqueous, this is aqueous, this is aqueous, and I'm gonna balance this by putting a two here and a two here. Now, I'm told that I have 13.84 milliliters of sulfuric acid. When I convert this to liters, I'm going to get 0 0.01 one three sorry 0 0.01384 liters of h2so4 and i'm also going to have 0 0.02500 liters of naoh and i have concentration of naoh as 0 0.100 moles per liter now, all they're asking us is what is the concentration of H2SO4? Now, I've got the volume and the concentration for NaOH, and I've got the volume for H2SO4. Now, this might look very familiar to you because this is a stoichiometry problem, right? So if I have the moles, um, moles per liter and the volume of NaOH, I can use that to find the moles of NaOH, use the mole ratio to find the moles of H2SO4, and use that to find the concentration of H2SO4. Okay, so let's start with that. 0 0.02500 liters of NaOH. Again, if I wanna find the moles first, I need to write the concentration such that the liters cancel out. 0 0.0, 0 0.100 moles of NaOH. So this way my liters will cancel out. I've got moles of NaOH left over but I need to find the concentration of H2SO4. So I need to find the moles of H2SO4. Because of my balanced equation, I know that two moles of NaOH reacts with one mole of H2SO4. So my moles of NaOH will cancel out. I've got moles of H2SO4, but I need to find the concentration, which is moles divided by liters. I've got the moles here, but I need to divide by the liters. So 0 0.01384 liters. And because I, I already have my 
required unit as moles in the denominator already there, I'm just gonna put a one there, right? So the units that I end up with are moles per liter. So when I type this all into my calculator, 0 0.025 times 0.1 divided by two, divided by 0 0.01384, I will end up with 0 0.0903. Now let's take a look at sig figs here. This gives me, this has four sig figs, this has four sig figs, and this has three sig figs. So my final answer should have three sig figs, sig figs as well, 0 0.0903 moles per liter of H2SO4, right? So although the context is quite different, we haven't learned about titrations until now, our calculations will look very similar. Now, Ms. Shearheart goes through a full question of the changes of pH as a titration is taking place. So watch those three videos and fill in your note package to see some other types of titration questions that you might be asked to find.